let's say that you have a string that you want to be a certain length and if it's not that long you want to either prepend or append some sort of characters to make sure that that length is consistent or let's say you want to display price information and your number of pennies is a single digit in a number but you always want to display two characters or two digits for the number itself how do you add that leading zero well in this video we're going to look at two different ways to do those things we're going to create a padding function ourselves and then look at the pad start and pad end functions that are already in javascript to do that for you so let's go ahead and get started all right if you're new to the channel and you're interested in learning web development design and developer tools you're in the right place make sure you go ahead and like the video subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that you can always get updates as i come out with new content now, as we start here, I want to show that uh, the documentation for the two different functions that we're going to talk about. One is the pad start. So this is on the string prototypes. This is specifically working with strings. And then the second is the pad end. And this is uh, obviously you add stuff to the beginning with pad start or you add things to the end. And you're, you're trying to make sure that either a string or a number becomes a certain length of characters, even if it is not by default. And we'll see what that means in a second. So let's come over to VS Code. And inside of VS Code, I'm using an extension called Quoka, which I would really highly recommend to you. And this basically gives you a live scratch pad for writing JavaScript and uh, seeing the log here uh, in a new file that you don't actually have to create a project. You don't have to run the file with Node. You don't have to run it in the browser. It just lets it run right here inside of VS Code. So that's what I've got running here. And let's start with just like thinking about how we would do this. So I'm, I'm creating a function here that's called pad at start. And let's say I've got a, a name string of some sort. And I want to make sure that that name, let me comment this out, that uh, name always has 10 characters, for example. So James has only five characters. So if we wanted to prepend this with spaces, we could do one, two, three, four, five, and then get uh, James here. So this is the kind of thing we want to do. And so with pad at start, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in an input string, then, and that would be James to start, then we'll pass it a length, how long do we want this string to be? And then we'll pass it what sort of characters do we want to pad this thing with? So we'll just call this character or car for short, something like that. So let's say that we wanted to call Let's uh, log this out. We'll call this by passing, or we'll call pad at start by passing James. And then length is 10, and then the character is an empty space. So this is undefined now because this function isn't returning anything. So let's see how we would build this out. We could start by creating a string that uses the input character and repeats that as many times as the length. So what we'll do is we'll start off with an empty string for start. And then we'll just do a regular traditional for loop, let i equals zero, i less than length, i plus plus. And then we'll just add on to start, we'll just add on the new character. All right, so the end of this, we will have a start string that is a repetition of those characters for the given length, okay? So then what we could look at doing is returning the input string plus or actually the wrong way around, start plus the input string, okay? And you'll see that uh, this actually works, so it returns something, but let's look at if we pass this, instead of an empty string, let's say we passed it one. Well, this is going, well, this is going to print out 10 ones and then our name or the input string of James. We don't want that to happen exactly. We want the whole thing to just be 10 characters. So what you can do, is you can add on, you can take the uh, const uh, return val, so the thing we want to return, and we can uh, combine those two. So this is uh, what we just returned a second ago, but now we want to only take the last 10 characters. So we pad it with 10 characters to make sure whatever the input string is, it's going to be at least 10 characters. And then with that new string, we just take the last 10. So we could do something like return, and then we can call slice, and pass it a negative length in here. And what this will do is it will start at the end of the string and it will count back as many times as you tell it, in this case, length, and the negative makes it start at the end. So the negative makes it start at the end, then it counts back length times, 
and then gets whatever that portion of the string is. So you see it goes from uh, the 10 ones in James down to 10 characters where you have five ones at the start and then James at the end. All right, so that's really cool. This is how basically you would build this kind of functionality yourself, but the fun fact is you don't have to and you can actually use the built-in JavaScript functionality to do this. So let's look at a couple of examples why. Let's look at, uh, this will probably be a little bit better to see inside of the browser. And let's open up, um, let's open up the developer tools and I'm gonna copy these two lines to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say we have a form and we wanted the values for these inputs. So we've got name and phone number. We wanted the values to be aligned, but obviously name and phone number are not the same length. So James Quick does not line up with this phone number here, right? See how those are not lined up with each other? Well, what if we wanted to make sure that all of these input names, the labels, for example, are all the same length? Well, this is where we get into the padding. And in this case, we can either add a padding to the start or the end of these inputs, and I'll show you how now. So, all right, so let's say we wanted each of these labels to be 20 characters. Well, we could take the string name, all right? Let's take this string and then let's call the pad start. And let's look at the documentation here to make sure we're doing this right. So what we're gonna pass is we're gonna use that string to call pad start. We tell it how many characters we want it to be and then what we want to pad with. So let's say we want this to be 20 characters and then we want to prepend this with empty strings. All right, so notice how now this name property has been shifted over to the right pretty far. And then we'll do the same thing with the phone number. And actually I probably want, uh, well, that's fine. So then down here, we can do the same type of thing. We can have separate this into two different strings. And the first one we'll do pad start and then pass it 20 as well. And then our empty string. And let's just, let's put this in the console so we can see it a little bit clear in here. And let's, and let's zoom in on this console so we can see this a little bit better. And notice now that the labels are lined up with each other so that the values associated with those labels are lined up as well. Now you might think this is a little bit odd. You might prefer your labels to be left justified instead of right justified in this case. So to do that, we can do just the opposite here. We can do the pad end instead of pad start for each of these. And then if we look in here, you can see that name gets put way over here and then the input gets put way over here and same thing for the phone number. So now that even though the labels are different lengths, the output of this is still the same in terms of where the value resides. Now in this case, I would probably tweak this to put the colon and space inside of the first string like this to show that you get your colon associated with the label and then the value is off far to the right, okay? All right, now let's say, what if you've got uh, money? So let's say you've got cons dollars, and that is uh, $20. And actually, this will be a number, not a string. And then cons cents, so you're trying to display money here, and your cents is just one, for example. You might uh, log this out. I'm going to use uh, ES6 template literals here, and say something like dollars, and then uh, cents. So if you're not familiar with ES6 template literals, Basically, this is a way of defining a string right in line uh, or defining a string that uses variables, variable interpolation right inside of the string. So this is a backtick character here. And notice that this outputs, let's uh, get rid of these logs. And notice the output of this is 20.1. And you might want to also put a dollar sign here. So 20.1 just doesn't look right. What we're used to is 20.01. The sense always has two digits. So how do you do this now? Well, you could use the pad start again, but since in this case is not a string, it's a number and pad start is only used with strings. So we could do something like uh, create a variable called formatted sense and we could convert sense to a string. So sense dot to string and then go ahead and call the pad start and then say we want this to be two digits and whatever we want to replace this with is going to be a zero. So whatever we want to uh, prepend to our now string is a zero. So now instead of since, we will include the formatted since. All right, and now we get a good display of uh, dollars in the sense of how you're used to it, making sure that you have uh, the right amount of characters for your since 
and it's legible, it makes sense to the user because 20.1 actually has a different interpretation than 20.01. All right, so something uh, similar here, what if you're doing dates? So let's say you have a, a const month equals, or const, let's start with year equals 1991, and then const month is uh, two. My birthday's in February, so let's go with two. So now if you wanted to display a date, you might do something like this. So again, using template literal strings here, you might do the uh, value of the month and then a slash and then the value of the year. All right, and I'm gonna get rid of this console log for the money up here. All right, so now we see this is uh, two 1991, but really what we're used to is we're used to having two characters for the, uh, for the month. So we can do a similar thing here. We can get a const formatted month and we have to convert our number to a string. So month dot two string, and then we'll call pad start. And we want this to be two characters and then we will pad it with a zero. So very similar to what we did with the sense up here. And now we'll display the formatted month instead of the regular month. And now we see what we'd expect a zero to uh, 1991. Now, another thing we can talk about is let's say we're doing a timer or something like that. So we have const and we have seconds equals uh, five seconds and then const milliseconds equals uh, one millisecond, for example. And the format that we want here is we want to have uh, two digits for the seconds and then three digits for the milliseconds. So this is like a stopwatch type timer if you're doing a race or something. So what we would do is probably log this out. And again, template literal strings here, we would have the seconds, if we put this into a variable. So seconds and then slash, or colon, excuse me, and then our milliseconds. So this obviously, let's uh, format or comment out the formatted date here. This obviously doesn't look like a timer. We want these things to look the way that we would expect them. So let's go ahead and format these. We can have formatted seconds, and this will be uh, the seconds and then two strings, so you always have to convert to a string, and then pad start, and then we want this to be two characters long, and then we'll pad with a zero character, and then we'll have the formatted milliseconds, and this will be the milliseconds dot two string, always convert it to a string, and then we'll call pad start as well, and this will be three instead of two, and then we'll pad it with zeros, and then lastly, let's go ahead and use these formatted seconds and formatted milliseconds. And now we should see, should see that this actually looks like a timer, which is pretty cool. So anytime you're looking to format your strings in the sense of making sure it's a certain length, you can either prepend or append using pad start and pad end in JavaScript to make sure that you can get the right format that you're interested in. Now, a couple of things. One, if you're interested in more videos on just like JavaScript fundamentals with error functions and promises and arrays and stuff, I've got a playlist that I'll link to up here that you can check out for more videos on JavaScript. And then lastly, if this uh, timer idea is a little bit interesting to you, I'm creating a course now called React and Serverless. And this course is a full stack course of building a typing game where you can let the user try to match typing characters that pop up on the screen, track their score, and it uses a countdown timer as well. So just to show you what this looks like on learnbuildtypes.netlify.app, if I start playing here, uh, here's H and X, and notice this timer is showing me the countdown as I go along here. So if you're interested in creating something like that and really understanding kind of intermediate full stack web development, you can check out uh, my courses page at jamesqquick.com courses and then uh, click on the React and Serverless and you can sign up to get a 50% off discount. Now, depending on when you watch this, this is going to come out at the end of May. So if you watch after, this will link to the buy button. If you sign up early though, you'll get the 50% off discount uh, when the course launches and I'll make sure to email that to you. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully this was interesting for you. I think it's really cool to uh, leverage the built-in functions in JavaScript. But I actually, when I was working on the course that I just mentioned created this functionality from scratch because I didn't know that this function existed. 
So question of the day, did you know about pad start and pad end? And have you ever come across a scenario yet that you needed some sort of padding in your strings? Let me know in the comments below and that's gonna wrap it up for this video and I will see you in the next one.